Hello again and welcome to another World Footy Game Imperial Guard Tactics video. Now before we get into today's video, I would like to say a huge thank you to Nitch Smith for sending in some awesome pictures of his 123rd Mordian Infantry Brigade, the Lone Stars. Absolutely fantastic. I am a sucker for Mordians. I think they're absolutely fantastic. Just, just, just love Mordians. And so I salute a fellow Mordian commander out there. Thank you, Nitch, for sending these pictures in. Really love the Victoria miniature that you've got on there. And of course, you know, who doesn't like the old uh, female commissar who has huge tracts of land? You guys all get to see that commissar model coming up soon. <laughs> Thank you for sending these pictures, Nitch. Absolutely love them. Love some of the conversion work that you've done. Love the paint scheme. If anyone else has got any cool pictures they want me to use in my videos, please post them on my Facebook page. There will be a link down in the description below. And without further ado, let's get into today's video. So today, guys, we are going to be doing another fixing the rules, or as the orcs say, fixing the rules. And we are going to be taking a look at infantry squads. Sort of. We're actually going to be looking at infantry squads slash... Infantry platoons. Some of you might be saying, what is this infantry platoon you speak of, Mordian Glory? And young conscript, I will tell you. So for those of you that only signed up to the guard in the last three years or so, uh, before 8th edition, the guard was able to take something called an infantry platoon. And it was a fairly simple concept. Basically, very simple concept in uh, in principle. In reality, it was quite complicated. But the basic premise was the Imperial Guard, you don't get a lot of men and you can only take your men in 10 man squads. So if we were limit and everyone was limited back then to essentially taking one battalion. It was called a combined armed detachment. And it was a bit limited. You could only take two HQ, you could only take three elites or um, six troops, three fast attack and three heavy support. So you were quite limited. Um, and that's why you have things like Imperial Guard, like squadron rules, because you could only have three heavy support. So what Games Workshop said is, well, you can take a squad of Lean Russes, because individually your Lean Russes aren't very good. And the same thing was true for the Infantry Platoon. And I highly recommend you go and pick up one of the 3rd to 5th edition codexes and have a look at the structure of the army. It's very cool, because how the Infantry Platoon worked was you essentially you're able to take multiple troop choices in one troop slot. So a bit like in your battalion now, you get your six troop slots. Well, imagine if instead of only taking one infantry squad per troop slot, you could take between two and five. It was very cool. And that was again, well now, you know, and in 8th edition, whilst we lost platoon, which was, you know, a huge part of the flavour of the guards and that made us very unique, it kind of balanced out because we were able to uh, take multiple battalions. Each battalion essentially functioned as a as an extended platoon, almost considering you could get, you know, as an extended combined arms attachment, almost because you could get an extra HQ and multiple extra elites and all this kind of stuff. So at first it was like, okay, well we have lost platoons, but we can build our own. We can use battalions to build our own. So it was okay. A lot of us, you know, a lot of veteran guard commanders. We lamented the loss of platoons, but we're happy that we still had some way of building them. History lesson almost over, because obviously in 9th edition, things have changed. Because in 9th edition, you are now punished for taking multiple detachments. For those of you that are brand new to 40k, brand new to the Guard, uh, one of the biggest changes from 8th to 9th edition, which has had a serious impact on the Guard in, in general, and is probably one of the reasons why we're looking quite low down in the old meta charts, is because... Um, we went from having this, you know, the more the more detachments you take, the better, to the more detachments you take, the worse. And so Guard, who had almost been made for 8th edition, were always the guinea pig for an edition. We were made, you know, oh, you can really get lots and lots of battalions, you can really get lots of command points. Um, that was taken away, from, that was, you know, they, they pulled out the Uno reverse card on us. The Uno reverse card was slapped down. And so now, we are... You know, we're punished for taking multiple battalions, which means we're now limited on the troops. So what I'm saying is, guys, we should, is that the way you fix this, the way you fix this is you don't ask everyone else in the game to change. You don't say, bring back the way you get more command points by taking more attachments. We, if we do that, we're no better than, I don't know, we're no better than those whiny chaos boys who are always asking the whole game to change around them. 
we should say, no, we just want to be able to fit in the new rules. You know, the rules have changed, and we want to be able to fit in them. And so the way you do that, the way we fix infantry squads, we fix uh, infantry platoons, and we fix the guard, is we bring back the official platoon system. And I am more than happy for Games Workshop to take, literally, they can copy and paste from the 5th edition codex how platoons worked, Put it in the new ninth edition codex. I'm happy. You could. I would be happy if it was literally like a bad photocopy that was shoved in the new codex. I, I wouldn't care how rough and ready it was. Just bring that, bring that back. That's how you fix them. Because instantly, what does that let you do? It allows guard to play on an even footing with all the other horde armies out there. Because other horde armies. Don't have the same problem as guard because they can take units, you know, look at orcs, you can take units from 10 to 30, tyranids 10 to 30, even demons. You, know, you can take big blocks of demons, can't you? So other horde armies and horde-like armies can adapt to 9th edition. They don't need the big, they don't need, they don't, they don't need to take multiple attachments. They can cram everything into one if they need to. Guard should be treated equally and that's what we should have as well. So that's what platoons are allowed to do. You can, you can fight on an even footing and everyone's going to start having the same command points wasn't that the, the whole point of ninth edition that everyone got the same command points well that's how i think you fix that that's how i fix you you think you fix the infantry side and you fix infantry squads and you fix yeah you fix a fundamental flaw in the guard because whilst it might seem that in morning glory you're not talking about anything specific to do with infantry you're just talking about this vague concept of infantry platoons well dear listener imaginary voice in my head that criticizes myself at every turn <laughs> um the guard is built on a foundation of infantry even the most diehard tank commander knows that they they probably should take some infantry i have a steel legion army which i had at its at its height of eighth edition fielded 15 armored vehicles admittedly four of those sentinels but you know the others were six chimeras five Lee russes and four sentinels um, even I still took six infantry squads because whilst I love tanks and I love Lumen Russes, you still want to have your infantry. You know, I've, one of my good friends, he loves his Valhallans. He has he's, he has so many tanks, and even he was like ninety infantry. Got to take your ninety infantry. How else are you going to screen the tanks? So the core of the guard is infantry. Even if you have tanks, the core of the guard's infantry, it's, it is the foundation upon which everything is built. And so, whilst it might seem like I'm talking about vague terms, by fixing infantry squads, the knock-on effect will be to just make the way of playing guard just so much less stressful. So much less stressful. Um, I would totally be okay with it being some kind of detachment choice. You know, you could take a battalion... But you could also take a platoon, and maybe it costs zero CP to take an extra platoon because you're limited to number to three detachments anyway, for uh, for 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 match play at two thousand points. You're limited to three detachments anyway, so you could say that it's it, or it's one CP. You know, make it so it's not it, it, you're limited in your unit roster. This platoon thing that I'm talking about, you're limited. You can only take infantry. And you can't start taking platoons of tanks or anything like that. And you, know, you, you, you you make it limited and you make it so that someone can't abuse it too much. And you just give, I would either, the simplest thing is to make it a troop choice. I don't really like the idea of making it its own separate attachment. You know, I think it, it's okay. I've, and I've said this idea before, it should be its own separate attachment. But I think the best thing to do is just to make it a troop choice. So make it a troop choice. Don't make it overly funky. Copy and paste it from 5th edition. Have a good time. Um, if You could even copy and paste it. You take it a step back and copy and paste it from 4th edition. Where platoons. You know you couldn't take an infantry. You couldn't take a Chimera for every infantry squad. Chimera squads. Known as armor squads. With their own separate entry. I actually think. You know, speaking of fixing infantry squads. Which is probably the title of this video. I think a separate part of that should be. The splitting of, of armored fist squads and platoons. I think that should be the case. Um, although that's more of a, I will hold my hand up. That's more of my sort of personal nostalgia, fluffy bunny head speaking. Um, 
but because you know you do get fully mechanized regiments and i think again that's you know it's probably adding a layer of complication that's not needed I th you know what yeah it's adding a layer of complication that's not needed i've convinced myself by arguing with myself uh that it's it's too too much mess having armored fist squads just have you know just have platoons like you did in fifth edition um and i think that will fix a lot of things now that we've spoken in in broad brush terms about how to fix the infantry um let's look at specifics now okay so the second thing that you want to do to fix infantry squads the unit entry infantry squads is it's a simple one but i just think and it's one that loads of guard players would it would just be such a nod of fan service by games works to the guard community sergeants should be able to take las guns it's as simple as that. To be totally honest with you, I think the LAS gun, the LAS rifle, should be an option for every sort of normal infantry guard uh, unit. You know, platoon commanders, LAS rifles. Company commanders, LAS rifles. I think it's just, you know, you, you can have the option to swap it out for LAS pistol and chainsaw. I just think, let's stop being silly now. Every, you know, the, the the one thing the Imperium has more of is practically lasguns over people. <laughs> you know, they, they, their plan to beat the Tyranids is put a lasgun in every person's hand. So it's quite it's quite simple, guys. I just think stop mucking around and making sergeants have to take las pistol and chainsaw. Just let them take lasguns. Can we please just stop with the messing around? Yeah, it's just it's just silly. I think it allows. So why? So rather than saying this from a feeling point of view. Let's look at it logically, right? Um, the number one re reason I would say give sergeants las guns is from, from a gameplay point of view is it speeds up the game. When you have a sergeant with a last pistol and chainsaw and nine guys with las guns, what that means is you have to roll the nine guys las guns and then roll the last pistol and chainsaw separately. Just slows the game down. Just slows the game down. If you're in rapid fire range with your las guns and you've got you've literally yeah you can you can just add the you can just add the dice in I guess but you've still got to explain to your opponent you know, especially if you're in a competitive setting you've got to explain to your opponent okay so this is you know two shots per guy and then so the, you, you do those dice and go oh and the sergeant will be you know throwing a frag grenade the sergeant will be using his las pistol okay and I can't tell you I know it's weird but I can't tell you the number of times. When I've had someone say to me, oh, it's the last pistol in range, or oh, yeah, uh, well, what's a sort of, because when you're in a tournament, you're often thinking of the next move ahead, so you're not, uh, you, you sort of 90% paying attention to what your opponent's doing, but when he starts saying some, when he starts saying something distinctive, you're like, oh, so what's that? I've had loads of people say, oh, so what's the sergeant doing? What's the sergeant doing? And I have to go, you're shooting his last pistol. And then I have to, you know, but I have to explain that. And I have, to, I have it's just so much easier if I can just go, that infantry squad, 10 last guns, all in rapid fire range shooting at that squad my opponent instantly knows yeah okay now it might really seem like a small thing if you're running a pure infantry guard army like me you're turning up with 18 infantry squads having to say that every single time having to say that the first nine times before your opponent goes oh and the last pistol and all this kind of thing it's an extra weapon you have to measure range for it's just stupid just give everyone a last gun make it just easier it makes it makes sense narratively which is important because fixing the rules rules should reflect narrative as best they can and it also speeds up competitive gameplay and gameplay in general and it streamlines and it simplifies and you know most base units these days are being produced with everyone gets the same gun guard should should have the option to do the same thing not everyone gets a sniper or a plasma gun but everyone gets a las gun just makes sense to me but what do i don't only work here so <laughs> that's one specific thing that I'd like to see change. Second thing is um, I'd like to see I'd like to see the ability for guardsmen to be able to be merged together again uh, in at the beginning of the game. So previously you were able to take from the same platoon three or four squads of guardsmen and put them all together. I think that should be brought back for sure. I think that should be brought back, no doubt. Uh, again, it just made it made things a lot quicker. 
because you instead of having to operate four separate individual units and move four separate individual units, you moved one blob of men. It was just much quicker and it just made things much faster and just streamlined and it was simpler. This big block of 40 dudes is all the same. Just made life so much easier. So again, we're talking about streamlining the guard, streamlining the game, leaning into competitive play. A lot of tournaments use time clocks now. You know, and and if competitive guard at the moment is and well in my opinion it has been for a while now is the pure infantry side of things, then we need to give the guard players who do the pure infantry thing, who run the competitive uh, uh, pure infantry guard lists, we need to give them ways of making things faster. Simple as that. Just smash them all together. And from a gameplay point of view, it's balanced. Yes, it makes your orders more efficient. Totally get that. But if you're smashing three or four squads together, you're opening yourselves up to blast weapons. Now blast weapons are not super prevalent, but if guard armies started becoming more competitive and those guard and the crooks of those guard armies were big blocks of infantry platoons, then you would see the blast rule coming into effect much more often. So the knock-on effect is it actually allows the game because guard, you know, guard a strong faction, uh, you know, could be a very strong faction uh, with a few simple changes. And you know, if guard starts shaking the metal with some serious infantry. Uh, safe, you know, sort of infantry presence, uh, then it will maybe will bring more blast weapons, and the you know that's only a good thing because it allows games workshop people to develop these rules to see them implemented and in effect on the table. I just think it's a really good way of doing it, and it gives the guard the the, the guard commander the flexibility. You know, you choose to do that at the beginning of the game. If you see you're facing a lot of blast weapons, okay, I'm going to keep my squads all separate, ten my units. I will take less blast weapons, but guess what? Uh, but I'm going to be less efficient on my orders and I'm going to take me more of my precious chess clock time to 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 win, to, to you know I'll, I'll be taking more of my precious precious chess clock time. So for me again it seems balanced it seems fair and it, again it pays fan service it pays lip service to those previous mechanics that the guard had that as a community a lot of the the long base community still wish we could do really really powerful stuff um those are the main things that i have for actually uh, fixing uh the, the infantry squads i think the ability to be able to, i think those are the three areas i would focus on the ability to be able to to take lots of infantry without being punished on the cp side of things bring us in line with other uh the other um armies i think that's fine uh and you know, allow sergeants to take last guns from a fun perspective, but also to speed up the game. And again, allow guardsmen and units to be able to blob together. Um, on a slightly separate note, less of a fixing the rules, but more of a fixing the model kit. I see a lot of people that are asking for, you know, they wish they could get new guardsmen models. Um, I think new guardsmen models, I think that would be a really good idea. I... To be honest, and this is being me totally selfish, guys, I'm actually not that keen on new guys and models coming out for a couple of reasons. Uh, and I only touched on this lightly because it's not really the context of this video. Uh, number one, I have lots and lots of the old ones, and I find that the old ones are really, really good. Like, I'd almost call it like a good skeleton. You buy your Cadian Guardsman, but, you know, a head swap here, a, a simple head swap, completely makes those models just look 20 times better really really good so um i think there are really i, I kind of think there's a lot of industries out there which are sort of built up around um built up around uh being able to do the head swaps and stuff and i think that those are really good companies another thing i would say is i'd be concerned that games workshop would um to be quite frankly bugger it up uh a lot of the new kits they've been producing at the moment guys are monopose uh, and not really that, um, how should we say, sympathetic to conversion work. One of the greatest things about the current guard kit is that it might be simple, but it is infinitely flexible. As someone who has recently, as part of the secret project that I'm working on, had some uh, exposure to the monopose models, they are really not great for converting at all 
and going from doing my great morning restoration project and having infinite customization to the point where I'm working on what must be my hundredth infantry squad, uh, infantry uh, plastic cane infantryman that I've converted into a Morgin, and every single one of them has still managed to be unique in some minor way. Every single one of them is unique from just having a little equipment swap here, little different head swap there. It's a big, yeah, I wouldn't trade that for the world. So if there was to be a new kit, I would say keep it really flexible, um, sell an upgrade sprue so we can make multiple regiments. You know, just don't bring, if you're not gonna bring the, the old regiments back, at least release as an upgrade sprue like you do for the the other chip for the marine chapter so we can turn them into Mordians to Lam officially um, without having to get them from like dodgy places or spend fortunes on eBay and um, include all the weapon options that you're allowed in there. There should be a heavy weapon team should be included in that box. A plasma gun, a melter gun, a sniper rifle, grenade launcher, a flamer should all be included in that box. A power sword should be included in that box, chain sword, las pistol, plasma pistol should all be included in that one box uh, and it should be priced at about £25. That would be my any more than that and you can't expect guard players to, to spend you can't ask them to spend 30 pounds on 10 plastic models so there we go that's me kind of yeah fixing the rules but also fixing the real life situation on the old humble infantry squad i'm sure i've missed loads of different ones but those are kind of the three main things i'd like to see fixed um and also the way i'd like to see them fixed in real life as well if we're going to have new kits let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. I purposely haven't talked about things like special platoon characters here. And I purposely haven't talked about things like conscripts because I do see them as like a separate entity here. I know you guys love my conscript videos. So there will be a fixing the rules conscript video coming up at some point. But I've done a few conscript videos in the last few months. So I'll probably let it settle down before I release that one. Unless I get an absolute outpouring in the comment section, morning glory, more content videos, please. If I get that, then of course I will I will obey, obey the whim of the community and you can have your content video early. Let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. Thank you for watching and of course, I'll see you guys next time.